This video covers the mathematics behind the steering algorithm for the new robot. Hey guys, it's been about three months and I am starting to do a little bit on the robot now. Wife made me a mask, kind of cool. Luckily, I work by myself, so I don't have to use it much. Math. More math. Okay. We start here with the representation of what we're trying to do on the controller. This is the DX controller, the Spectrum DX, and it's US, USB controller, two sticks. On the right, I have this stick here, and it represents translation. Y is forward, X is to the right. The left side stick is curvature. Now there's a reason I use curvature. It's not obvious. The idea is I want to be able to tell the robot to pivot about a certain point on the ground. And ideally, what you'd like to say is, hey, go to this point and pivot about that point. And maybe you think you could just use the stick to point towards that point. And that's what I thought initially, but I was wrong. And the reason is that as you leave your dead zone in the center, when you get to this point about here, you're telling the robot, I want you to pivot about this point, which is really, really close to the robot. So the robot is going to go and try and do an extreme rotation about a very close point. And even if you're relatively fast, as long as you're going along this route, the robot's going to be trying to pivot about a point that's too close to the robot, robot, and it's going to be over pivoting. And you want it to be smooth, you want it to be gentle. So instead, I have an inverse, which means when you leave your dead zone, it represents a very far pivot. Pivot about a point that's in this direction, but really far away. The farther you get away, the farther you push the stick, it gets tighter and tighter. And that's sort of how a car works, right? You got a wheel, you turn it slightly, it's got a really long pivot point. As you tighten that turn tighter and tighter, you turn that wheel more and more, the pivot point gets closer and closer. And that's what feels to me like it's going to be natural. We'll see. If I had a touch screen, maybe I could just touch it, but uh, I don't have time to do that. So here's an example. Down here, there's a, a robot, and I'm skipping a lot of the steps that I'll cover later. And there's a reference frame that's embedded in this robot. And this reference frame right now is mapped one-to-one -one with the controller. Translation is saying, hey, go in the minus x direction. Curvature is saying, hey, I want to pivot about a point that's in front of the robot. So if you look in this reference frame, go in the minus x direction and pivot about a point that's in front of the robot. This is going to be an arc of a circle where this is the center of the circle. Pivot about that point. All right, that makes sense. Now, we don't just have one reference frame on this robot. And since I'm going to be doing transformations, I'm going to do them whole hog. So here we go. Let's not, don't get too excited about this. The idea is your command starts in the controller reference frame. It's like this is you, this is your driver. You know, you're sitting here looking out this way. In terms of the robot, there are three weapons reference frames, red, white, blue. Red Y looks out this way, 
In white, y looks out this way, and in blue, y looks out this way. Whenever you pick a reference frame, you pick a weapon, then it's as if the controller here gets attached to this reference frame. Like you're sitting, your butt sitting right here and you're looking that way as forward, or your butt sitting right here and you're looking this way as if, it, as if it's forward. Same here. You give the command in the weapon reference frame, it gets transformed into the vehicle reference frame, and then it gets shot over to the wheels. And the wheels have their own reference frame. All the wheels relative to each other have the same reference frame. Out is where the Y direction is. Out, out, and out. And the reason for that is it makes them interchangeable. If I have a, a, a wheel here and it gets broken, I can stuff any other wheel here and out is zero. So let's give an example on how you would calculate how the wheels get set based on a command from the controller. Let's say, forgetting about where it came from, which red, white, or blue, in fact, it's easier here to say, well, what if you're on blue, you're sitting on blue, and so you just told it to go forward in blue. So that's this green arrow. This green arrow represents the direction you want the vehicle to go. Notice there's no rotation here. There's no pivot point. This is an easy one. This green arrow gets transformed over into wheel one. The wheel one reference frame, by the way, this is fixed from body to wheel one. Wheel one doesn't change, but it gets a fixed transformation and it says, oh, this vector becomes this vector. And in order to go that way, I have to rotate the wheel to this angle and I have to get it to go because of the length of the vector, I have to get it to go a certain speed. Makes sense. This one, it's in the minus y direction, right? So it, it essentially doesn't need to rotate at all from the start. It just needs to go this direction. This one rotates differently, and it goes in this direction. Rotate until it's oriented, and then this direction. Pretty simplistic. In terms of the math, you take the vehicle, you do a two by two transformation, which gets this vector into this reference frame, one, two, or three, and that gives you the translational vehicle velocity. Boom, boom, send that to the controller. It knows how to produce it. Good to go. Now let's get a little more complicated. In this case, I want to do both a translation, the green arrow, and I want to do a rotation. Now, if you just look at those, I want to go this way and I want to rotate the, the vehicle this way. Turns out that's going to be as if you're pivoting about somewhere around this point. Okay? So, pivot, it's a really sharp turn, but it's good for example. How do you do that? The green, the translation, it gets transformed as this green arrow here, green arrow here, this green arrow here. It's all the same, just like the, exact, the last example. All the same directions, all the same magnitudes. The rotation, however, omega, omega cross r tells you, oh, I need this velocity. It's perpendicular to this radius, and the magnitude is based on the, the size of the rotation rate. This way. Oh, this guy is this way. This guy is this way. Makes sense. If you take these points and you go that way, that way, and that way, you're going to get a rotation about the center. All right. What happens when you combine these two together? You take the green and you combine it. What, what if the heck? I should ask my wife what color that is. Uh, Orangish, yellowish, orange? I don't know. Anyway, you take that, you combine it with that, and it gives you purple. That's the direction that this wheel would need to be oriented and the amount 
of rate it would have to go in order to get that. Note that this purple here is longer than this green one, but not as long as this one plus this one together, somewhere in between. This one, however, when you take this green and add this orangish yellow one together, you get a really long velocity vector. So this gets oriented along this purple velocity vector, and it has to go much faster than this wheel. Down here, you see something else happening. The translational velocity vector and the rotational velocity vector is actually in the other direction. So they somewhat subtract from each other, and you get a very short-ish velocity vector that's going straight down. Now, if you remember where I said the rotation I'm asking for is somewhere around here, notice that that is perpendicular to the radius that goes from there to there. This is perpendicular to the radius that goes from there to there, and that is perpendicular to the radius that goes from there to there. So that gives you a pivot point. Now this is an extreme example. I don't think you'd want to be turning this close uh, to the robot. But if you have a defensive plow or whatever, and you want to keep that pointed towards an opponent, ideally you would want to pitch your, put your pivot point on or near your opponent so you rotate around them and you keep your defensive item, whatever it is, or offensive item pointed at them. That's the whole idea of this design. This is the math behind it. All right, up here, as before, you take the vehicles, they, they do the transformations in the vehicle frame to the wheel frames, and then you take the, the translational, and then you add the omega cross R term, and that's the total vehicle frame. That's it.